Captain 315 here. Happy Saturday. Uh, hey folks, we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, on this opposed twin, this is not a porting video. This is for vertical to horizontal swapping these engines because there seems to be a lot of uh, uh, opinions and misinformation out there, so on and so forth. Uh, do you do it? Do you not do it? Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? This is the first one I've done, and I also had the extra, um, the added confusion of it being a pressure lube engine. Um, this is the first one I've ever done. I, I don't see what the big deal is at all. Um, with a pressure lube, and we'll get into this, with a pressure lube, I can see where you would want your uh, correct oil sump, oil pan, uh, side cover, so on and so forth. But I think there's a way around that. So, uh, Follow along with me. I'm going to set the camera down here more against the bench so I can point things out on these. Uh, my ugly mug will fortunately be cut out of most of the video, so you don't have to stare at that. You shouldn't be watching me anyways. Watch where I'm pointing. Let's get going on this. Okay, so my ugly mug is cut out. That's perfect. You don't have to look at my face. All right, let's go through the oil uh, feeding path of the vertical shaft engine real quick. Uh, remember, this is a pressure lube deal. I don't think we need to go in, in any in-depth uh, as far as a uh, splash lube engine. You know how that works, right? Oil splashes everywhere. Boom, done. Lubricates everything. So this is a little different animal. I, I believe most of you are probably going to be messing with the splash lube stuff. We'll get into that shortly. I want to cover the pressure lube stuff. <clears throat> I can't speak once again. All right. Here's your vertical shaft sump oil pan as I call it. Uh, it you're, a lot of people call this a sump, I still call it a pan. It probably comes from uh, car terminology and car life. It's a pan that has oil in it on the bottom of the engine. It's an oil pan, right? So this sits like this. There's your, there's your bolt pattern. There's your, here's your oil pump on a vertical shaft engine, okay? It is driven, if you see that little drive in there, it is driven by the camshaft, okay? Keep this in mind for future reference. Camshaft has a hole all the way through it. See the blue shirt? Yay, all right. So, here is your oil pickup, your little screen right there, okay? That picks up, goes direct to the pump. Out of the pump, through to the filter, it comes out in two separate pipes here, okay? This pipe, feeds your camshaft, okay? It goes through that hole that we just looked at in the cam, goes over to this side of the block. Let's see if I can get a little more center for you. It's gonna feed that cam bearing, and then it's gonna come down a passage right here. It'll feed this main bearing, okay? Now we've got the main fed. This side, the second pipe right here feeds this main bearing. Okay, how does it get to the rods? This is a mirror image. This is on both sides of the crankshaft. You've got a little slot right here, all the way around, and you've got a hole. That hole is an oil feed. It goes up through the crankshaft. Boom. Feeds your rod right there. See? Same thing on the other side. There's your machined slot. There's your oil feed hole. There's the hole in the rod journal. Okay, there, we've got lube to the cam, we've got lube to the rods, got lube to the mains. Now, we decide to flip this thing and go horizontal. Um, we're gonna get into this in a minute. I think you could probably, if you got a little bit of, uh, little bit of skills and you wanted to get crazy, you could probably use the uh, vertical shaft parts and just get a, a splash lube horizontal pan uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, let's go through the correct way to do it. If you're lucky enough to find horizontal shaft pressure lube stuff, um, they're like hen's teeth. Good luck is all I can tell you. And that's why we're going to go over where I think you can get away with this vertical situation. But here is your oil pan, your oil sump for a horizontal engine. All it is is a basic splash lube pan. This would have a screen in it. It's got a pickup right here. Comes out that hole right here, okay? Now, 
The problem is, when you get over to this block, this is in a vertical shaft situation where that flat cover sits, right? Kind of an inspection hole. That block's actually sitting on your tractor like this. Okay. Bolt pattern, we're not even going to go into that. The bolt patterns are all the same. This pan will bolt right on here. Okay. Except you don't have this hole right here. Okay. That hole had to be drilled. Here's your side cover or your base gasket. Put that on there, line up your holes, boom, punch a hole. Now you have oil from the pan through this feed hole. Now you've got oil to the block, okay? Let's flip this up this way. There's the hole that was drilled, correct? There's already a hole right here. On the vertical shaft engine, that hole is right here. That is actually a bolt hole. There's a hole there. Hold it down. On the horizontal engine side cover, that's an oil feed. That corresponds with that threaded hole for the vertical block. I went ahead and cleaned up the threads, took them out of the block. I don't think that's really necessary. It's gonna feed. Okay, so on the horizontal engine, this is your side cover. It feeds in here, feeds your pump through your filter. It comes out this passage right here, straight over, feeds that main and rod. There's your other passage instead of having pipes. Goes up, feeds the camshaft, runs through the cam, goes across the engine and feeds the opposite side. Okay. Horizontal shaft engine does not have the drive tanks to drive the oil pump. I don't see why that would be a problem at all to just throw this in there with a horizontal shaft situation. If anything, I suppose it could feed a little bit of additional oil, which is never a problem. Now, inside this block, you can see these little slots right here. Those slots appear to be in the same position, whether it's a splash lube or a pressure lube engine, uh, horizontal or vertical. Uh, my thought is that if this thing's running in a splash lube situation, oil is gonna sling up and drop down in there. On a vertical, it'll just lay in there. Um, it's basically just a feed hole. Uh, I don't see that you have to mess with that. Um, Let's see, oil drains, or I'm sorry, breather chambers. Let's go into that first. The verticals, since this engine sits this way, they put the breather holes on one valve spring chamber, and those are pretty good size holes. They're nice and shielded. See if I can get to it and show you. They're shielded in this passage behind here, so oil isn't gonna splash up and go out that breather chamber. On the other breather chamber, there's nothing. This has a flat cover on it, and from the factory, has a little tiny hole right here that is about an eighth of an inch. I don't know how that can allow anything in or out, but you know what? These things don't tear up valve guides or anything. Uh, that's your lower cylinder, so my guess is Briggs wanted to keep the oil, uh, the excessive amount of oil out of there. Now, this one's been modified. We'll get into that later. This is the hot rod motor. Um, going to horizontal, I drilled oil returns. You can see that down in the bottom of the chamber. Uh, that's a problem I've had with the, uh, the current opposed twin on the B1. Any sustained high RPM riding would fill those chambers up, it couldn't drain out, and the thing would start smoking and calm down for a little bit, and then it was fine again, it, but it would blow up the breathers and everything else. So, the idea with going horizontal is I want both sides to breathe a little bit. So, enlarge that factory feed hole right there, and then just put a little drain hole in the bottom, and then put a regular breather on this side too. Uh, that's going to allow gases to escape on this side, which will 
allow oil to get in here, uh, at least in the form of a mist. Uh, I'm hoping this side with those two giant ones won't over oil and fill that chamber up. So I put a pretty good size uh, return in there and it's also shielded and I'm hoping that's gonna help keep it the excessive amount out of there. Um, all right, we've covered that. Let's go to uh, let's go to a splash lube. You you guys are most of you guys are going to be doing this with a splash lube engine, okay? Um, if, if if you're going to horizontal, um, your vertical side cover. I don't know what the splash lube ones look like, but there's a pressure lube one. They're thick, okay? Look at the difference. However. If you're in a situation where you're going to be moving the motor around or doing something custom where having a pulley or a drive system out here a little further than normal um, isn't going to hurt you, I don't know why you couldn't just leave that there, you know, in a splash lube situation. Uh, flip the thing over. Uh, as far as the oil pan, uh, obviously you're not going to have a flat cover, so... If you're going to go to horizontal, you need to get a horizontal oil, oil pan. Uh, those are out there. And if it's a splash lube one, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, the splashers do have a couple little, uh, for lack of a better term, a couple little little bridges right here or little cutouts to kind of direct the oil from the slinger is my guess. Uh, the blocks do as well. I think if you wanted to... You could probably take in line with where your splasher is going to be and maybe just cut a little notch at the base right here in the direction of flow so that the oil will hit that. And instead of trying to fling into the cylinder as much, it'll keep some of it down in the pan. That one's up to you. These things are so bomb proof, uh, even with the splashers, I don't think you need to really worry too much at all about it. Put a, put a dipstick uh, in it. We'll get into that in a second. Put a, uh, a rod dipper on it and get a horizontal pan and send it. Uh, if you gotta run, if you can't use this cover and you gotta get a horizontal side cover, go for it. Uh, they normally have a bearing in them, so you may have to modify. This I don't know for a fact. Um, a lot of the horizontal splashers had a bearing on the, the PTO side. So you may end up having to either machine this part of the crank down to accept a bearing that would go right up against this gear, um, or you may not have to, I just, I'm not familiar with that, but be prepared. Uh, also the vertical cranks are a lot longer. I actually cut probably a good two inches off the end of this crankshaft and this size here is inch and, what is it now? Well, it actually doesn't even matter. Just say inch and three eighths, okay? That one all the way out to about here because of the thicker cover. So I basically cut that down on the lathe, put a nice radius. If you do this at home, do a nice radius right here or you'll bust the snout right off that crank. Okay, we're not gonna go into a lot of detail on that part there. Uh, as far as a pressure lube, and we're kind of going a little off kilter here. Uh, as far as a pressure lube engine, you're still going to need a horizontal, um, you're going to need a horizontal pan. Uh, I don't see any way around that because you got a flat cover that now has to be an oil sump, uh, a storage area. You, you got to get a horizontal pan. My thought is if you have a pressure lube engine, and like I said, these, these horizontal parts right here, this oil pan and this side cover especially, they're like freaking hen's teeth. You ain't going to find them. Okay, so now you want to use your vertical stuff. Get a splasher pan. You're going to try to use your vertical side cover with an oil pump. Well, the oil level's down here. That ain't going to be good, okay? My thought would be that if you could take this screen out and put a plug in here. Now we're getting kind of crazy, but I don't know why you couldn't drill and tap somehow and either have a pipe or some kind of a uh, uh, braided stainless or something of some form and come down and just bring that down into the pan, okay? Your oil pan's right here. Why couldn't you just run a tube down into that pan or 
you could even come out the side of the block and run a tube down, down into the bottom, down the side here and into the bottom with a 90 and do it right there. Uh, it would take some tinkering, but the most important thing is that you need to get oil from that pan up to this pickup where that oil pump is. Uh, folks, if somebody does that, I would love to see how it's done and see what the results are. Uh, in my particular case with the wheel horse where this is going on, um, I couldn't run that big thick cover. I had to run the thin style cover because these engines are already pretty offset on those. Uh, and I wasn't feeling like shoving that out there another two inches. So uh, folks, the, I, I just don't see why this is such a big deal, but I don't see any way around it unless you, at the very minimum, get a horizontal shaft splasher oil pan. Uh, oh, I'm back. I almost forgot to add something. This seems to be like the biggest question when someone's talking about horizontal swapping engines and stuff. Oh, what about the dipstick? Guys, if you've gone this far and you're getting into it this far, my, uh, no, the dipstick, just no, don't worry about it. See that little boss right there, that little blank? Some engines actually had a rubber plug in there from the factory, so it could go horizontal or vertical. Uh, personally, I've not seen one, but I've seen pictures. I know they're out there. But you're going to punch a hole in there for the dipstick to fit into and make sure the stick can get down in the pan. Now, as far as using a vertical stick uh, in a horizontal situation uh, or using the OEM horizontal stick, uh, that I can't tell you how those are going to attach, um, but it sits in a little hole with a rubber plug, or I'm sorry, with an O-ring or, or a rubber gasket on there, and then it attaches at the top. All right, if you're not sure about what stick you have and what model and vertical and horizontal and oil level, look up the oil capacity level for a horizontal uh, opposed, and believe it or not, I do not know that off the top of my head. Uh, say that calls for 1.75 quarts. Put 1.75 quarts in it, shove the dipstick in there, and make a full mark. There, you're done. There, there's not much to this, all right? You, don't sweat the dipstick. All right, folks, uh, hopefully this helps you out a little bit. I would love to hear some results if anybody wants to do a flip. Um, as always, if somebody catches me making a mistake and I missed it in the editing, uh, I need to be called out. Uh, I don't take offense to those kind of things. We don't want to be giving misinformation on here uh, like social media and uh, the televisions do, right? <laughs> That's for another day. Uh, all right, folks, uh, make sure you stick around for the porting videos uh, if you're so inclined or if you're interested, and uh, we'll keep rocking and rolling here. Hope you all have a great day.